welcome to Grab and Go Info. Multiple time series forecasting refers to training many time series models and making predictions. For example, if we would like to predict the sales quantity of 10 products in 5 stores, there will be 50 store product combinations, and each combination is a time series. Using the multiple time series model, we can train and predict the 50 time series model at the same time. Another example is to predict multiple stock prices at the same time. In this tutorial, we will predict the stock prices of five tech companies using profit. Three ways of running multiple time series forecasting will be demonstrated. You will learn how to run multiple time series forecasting using for loop, how to set up multi-processing and utilize all the cores on a computer to run multiple time series models, how to set up PySpark to run multiple time series forecasting in parallel. If you are not familiar with profit, Please check out my previous tutorials on time series forecasting using Profit. Let's get started. In the first step, we will install and import libraries. Three packages are installed. If Finance is the Python package for pulling stock data from Yahoo Finance. Profit is the package for the time series model. Pispark is for setting up the Spark environment. After installing the three Python packages, we imported the libraries needed for this tutorial. Pandas and NumPy are for data processing. If Finance is for pulling stock price data from Yahoo Finance, Profit is for building the time series model. Seaborn and Matplotlib are for visualization. Pool and CPU count are for multi-processing. Pispark.sql.types, Pandas UDF, and Pandas UDF type are for Spark parallel processing. CQDM is for generating a process bar to show the completed percentage. Time is for tracking the time used for modeling and prediction. To get the code for this tutorial, Please check out my blog post on medium.com. I will put the link in the video description. Medium.com is my most referenced website for data science and machine learning. It charges $5 per month for full access. I have been a medium.com member for many years and that's the best $5 I spent every month. If you would like to support me and buy me a cup of coffee, please use the link in the video description to join the medium membership at no additional cost. If you prefer not to join, you can still read the post because there are a couple of free posts each month for everyone to read. Okay, let's continue with the tutorial. The second step pulls stock data from Yahoo Finance API. We will pull two years of daily data from the beginning of 2020 to the end of 2021. Start date equals 2020 -0102 means the earliest date for the stock data is January 2nd of 2020. It did not start with January 1st because January 1st is a holiday and there is no stock data on holidays and weekends. End date equals 2022-0101 means that the last date for the stock data is December 31st of 2021, if finance excludes the end date. So we need to add one day to the last day of the data end date. We will download the closing prices for five tickers. FB is for Facebook. GOOG is for Google. ORCL is for Oracle. MSFT is for Microsoft. And AMZN is for Amazon. The goal of the time series model is to predict the closing price of all five stocks. From the visualization of the stock prices, we can see that all five stocks increase in prices. And Amazon and Google have the highest prices. There are 505 data points for each ticker. And there are no missing values. Step 3 transforms the dataset into a multiple time series model dataset. Firstly, the dataset is transformed from the wide format to the long format using the pandas melt function. Profit requires at least two columns as inputs, a DS column and a Y column. The DS column has the time information. The column date is renamed to DS. The Y column has the time series values. In this example, because we are predicting the closing stock price, Y represents the stock closing price. We can keep the column name ticker as is. After transforming the dataset from the wide format to the long format, we have 2,525 records. Next, we group the pandas data frame by the column ticker and save it in a new data frame called groups by ticker. Using dot groups dot keys, we can confirm that there are five groups, one group for each ticker. In step four, the function for training and forecasting each group is defined. The input data is an individual time series data for a group. Profit initiates the time series model with the default hyperparameters and we give the model the name M. I will create another tutorial for Profit Time Series Model Hyperparameter Tuning. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel or Medium email so you will be notified when the video is published. M.fit group fits the profit model on the individual time series data, which is the stock price data for a ticker. 
make future data frame creates a new data frame called future for the forecasting. Periods equals 15 means that we will forecast for 15 days of data. After predicting on the future data frame, profit produces a long list of outputs. We only kept DS. It hat, it hat lower and it hat upper. It hat is the predicted value. It hat lower and it hat upper are the lower and upper bound of the uncertainty interval. A new column called ticker is created in the forecast data frame to indicate the ticker name for the predictions. The output of the function has five columns. DS, ticker, it hat, it hat upper and a hat lower. In step 5, we will make multiple time series forecasting using for loop. The time used for the forecast is calculated by recording the time in the beginning and at the end, then getting the difference between the two. An empty data frame is created to save the forecast results. For each ticker, we firstly get the time series data, then apply the function for training and forecasting to each individual time series, and finally concatenate the forecast results together. It took 28 seconds to run the five time series models using a for loop, and the output has five columns. In step 6, we will use the Python multiprocessing package to run the time series forecasts in parallel. Firstly, the time series data for each ticker is saved in a list. Secondly, a pool process with the number of workers being the number of CPUs. The pool object from the multiprocessing Python package executes a function across input data in parallel. CPU count returns the number of CPUs in the system. A map is the parallel version of map. It returns an object and the results need to be converted to a list. We use a map to apply the train and forecast function to each element in the list called series, where each element is a data frame for an individual ticker. TQDM shows the progress bar of the training. The prediction output is a list of forecast results, one data frame for each ticker. The pool process needs to be manually terminated using dot close. Failure to do this can lead to the process hanging on finalization. Join tells the pool to wait till all the jobs are finished before exiting. Finally, the results for all the tickers are concatenated into one single data frame. This process takes around 10 seconds. In step 7, we will use Spark to forecast multiple time series in parallel. Firstly, a Spark session called Spark is created. We can type the Spark session name to check the information such as the Spark version. Version 3.2.1 is used in this example. Next, the Pandas data frame is converted to a Spark data frame and grouped by ticker. Create data frame takes a Pandas data frame and converts it into a Spark data frame. Apply and Pandas maps each group using a Pandas UDF and returns a data frame. Schema is a struct type describing the schema of the returned data frame. Spark used 12 seconds for the forecast. Another way of doing multiple time series forecasting is to use Pandas UDF as a decorator and apply the function to the group Spark data frame. However, it is preferred to use apply in Pandas over this API because it will be deprecated in future releases. Nevertheless, I provide the code for using the Pandas UDF decorator for your reference. Now you know how to make multiple time series forecasting using a for loop, using multi-processing, and using Spark, which method should you use for your project? The general guideline is, when the number of models is small, there is not a big difference in processing time. So any one of the three methods is good to use. When the number of models is medium, use multiprocessing or Spark to utilize multiple CPUs in parallel. When the number of models is large, Spark is preferred. If you have made it this far, you probably find the information in this tutorial helpful. Please click the like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I publish new videos like this. To learn more about time series forecasting, please click the YouTube playlist on the screen now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.